Hey Mountain Family and welcome to another Mental Health Monday. Today I'm starting something new in this series where I interview another YouTuber and we get their perspective on a topic involving mental health all in the name of breaking the silence. So without further ado, please welcome Amy Waters from Waters Wife Vlogs. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me on this segment and I can't wait to discuss my thoughts with you. How are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you doing? Pretty good. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, no worries. October is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Month, a topic that is very dear to Amy's heart. Her and her husband Tyson lost their son Beckett last year to stillbirth, and I will have a copy of her link down below so you can see that experience through their eyes. That being said, I would like to ask you, Amy, some questions about how losing your son affected your mental health and how you're doing now that your daughter Mallory is here. Before we start though, would you mind telling our viewers what mental health problems you have? Yeah, so I actually was officially diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder just kind of stemming from events that happened to me in my childhood and early adulthood. And then I also have been diagnosed with depression in the past, but that has transitioned into anxiety. Before having kids, how would you describe your mental health? So I would say that I was pretty well controlled with my mental health with the help of talking with my husband and I did go see different therapists throughout my life. Therapy was something that I for sure needed to keep up on and you could tell when I hadn't gone to therapy for a while, there would be times that I would have more down days, if you want to call them that, than up days. So before losing Beckett, um, I, was, I was already struggling with my mental health to begin with. We'll just say that. I can relate because when I don't see my therapist, it, yeah, it's like it gets bottled up or something and I have to just let it out. Therapy really helps yeah. me too, especially talk therapy. Yep. When you lost Beckett, how did that affect you mentally? I would say that losing Beckett definitely added to the post-traumatic stress and the anxiety. I would also say that some of the depression was back, but I think that that's just pretty par for the course when you're first experiencing grief. I don't think that losing him caused a major case of depression. Like I said, it was just kind of the average depression that came with it as I worked my way through the different grief waves. And even still, I'll have my sad days. But more, more than any of that, it's just added to my anxiety. I have a lot of stress that I just kind of associate with. And I mean, I think that goes hand in hand with the post-traumatic stress. If I get triggered, and something reminds me, then that just adds to the anxiety and it just kind of goes in a circle between the post-traumatic stress and the anxiety. What were your first initial feelings and thoughts when you found out you were pregnant with Mallory? So my very first thought was just kind of disbelief, mostly because it had taken us so long to get pregnant with Beckett and such a short amount of time to get pregnant with Mallory. So it was just kind of like, the first initial thing was just like, no, this isn't right. This isn't, you know, this test is wrong. But then immediately, like, just the fear sets in. And obviously, Beckett was a stillbirth. It, he wasn't a miscarriage. But yet, I still was terrified that I was going to miscarry. In fact, so we found out I was pregnant when I was about three or four weeks along. And... By the time I went to my first official OB appointment at 10 weeks, I had already had three ultrasounds because I was just so scared that I was going to miscarry her. And my doctor was really, really awesome to work with me with all of that. And she would, you know, call in a prescription for an ultrasound. We did lots of lab work. And essentially they treated me as if I had a history of miscarriage just with how much anxiety I had through that. So it was just kind of like such a bittersweet moment, just sheer excitement that, you know, we were expecting again, but so much panic and anxiety and just, you know, it was just, I think it was obviously I caused more stress than I needed to, but it's like, you can't stop yourself. You can't help but to feel that. I, I understand, yeah. Like, you just can't help but feel what you feel, and it's really hard to just stop feeling that way. Yeah, like, you can sit and say, in your rational mind, you're like, I know that worrying about this is just gonna put, 
you know, stress into my body and that's not gonna help the matter at all. But the more I like tried to talk to myself rationally, the more it just didn't happen and I continued to stress and worry. And you know, it just all adds together. How are Beckett and Mallory's pregnancies different emotionally? When I got pregnant with Beckett, just, I mean, I knew that miscarriage was always an option. I have several people in my life who have had miscarriages. And so there was always kind of that worry, but especially once I got past week 12, you know, the quote unquote safe zone, I was like, okay, you know, this pregnancy is really happening and oh my gosh, you know, we're gonna be parents. And I just really didn't even think about any other concerns after that point. I mean, there was always that worry in the back of your mind and truthfully, I've said this a few times, I never really felt like we were gonna bring Beck at home. I don't know if that's just, I don't know what to attribute that to, but that was always just way in the back of my mind. I never really put much stock into that. With Mallory though, we very much knew what the risks were. We knew that at any moment, you know, she could have a brain bleed just the same as Beckett did. And, you know, we, there was just almost no relaxation from the moment I first felt her kicking until the moment she was delivered. If she stopped kicking for even a few minutes, then I immediately was in panic. And, you know, and then I'd feel her move or kick again and I'd feel relief. But then five minutes later, it'd be like, okay, wait, well, now she's not kicking again. And it was just kind of like, I couldn't go back to being that naive Amy that didn't know this world. You know, you just almost can't enjoy your pregnancy even though you're trying so hard to not let past experiences affect it. You know, you just, you just stress so much. In a way, it sounds like it's akin to PTSD because it greatly affects you and you can't go back to what it was like before. You can't feel what it was like before. It just affects you now. And with all those feelings that you said, just panic and anxiety, it, it's almost like it changes you. I can imagine. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's kind of like when you learn to read. Now that you know how to read, you can't not look at a print or see letters and create words out of that. It's impossible to pretend that you don't know how to read. So it's kind of like the exact same thing. I can't go back to not knowing what I know now. Right, right. Now that Mallory is here, how would you say things have changed mentally? Are you more anxious, less? Do you think things now that you didn't before? So now that we have Mallory here, my biggest concern besides her well-being is SIDS because when we lost Beckett, we found a lot of online support groups and I became really good friends with a lot of people who had pregnancy and infant loss at any given stage. And now that Mallory's here, it did relieve the stress in the way that like if I'm concerned about her breathing, I can physically go check on her and I can see her anytime I want. We also invested in one of those smart socks like the Owlet that reads her heart rate and her oxygen levels. So there is peace of mind in that regard, but on the flip side, I know now several people who have lost children to SIDS or we know someone who lost their child to whooping cough because they were exposed to it before they were vaccinated. So now there's just a whole new level of, okay, life is so fragile, now she's here, but there's still you know this, this, and this that could happen. And it's something that I knew that I was gonna have to work on when she got here safely was, I can't be a helicopter parent, I can't always be protecting her. I can't be over her 24-7. I'm gonna have to kind of reel myself in and make sure that she's able to experience the world because when she starts going to school and as she gets older and she wants to go do things with her friends, like I'm scared that she's going to, you know, get in a car accident or this or that. Like I'm terrified of losing her, but at the same time you have to let her experience life if that makes sense. So I feel like the worrying, the wor a parent never stops worrying no matter what, if they've experienced loss or, or whatnot, but I feel like I'm just like hypersensitive to that now. As a mom, you're already 
worried and anxious about your kid but when you have anxiety on top of that it's so hard not to be a helicopter mom I totally feel you it's really really hard to just let them be their own person you know exactly <laughs> how is your anxiety and PTSD being handled now um, at the current moment I have not returned to therapy yet it is in the works we also have been working with a company that does online therapy that we are about to start so therapy is on the close horizon and I just make sure that I have good communication with my husband and that when I am feeling certain things I try not to bottle them up and just kind of express them. Uh, I feel like I just want to keep a good pulse on it because the moment I feel like and or my husband feels like that I need to go on a medication of some sort then we'll go down that avenue too so it's just kind of keeping an open mind and kind of balancing between relying on my own strength but knowing when the appropriate time to get adequate help is. How has Tyson supported you mentally through all of this? Would you say that he supports you differently before kids than after? Um. Honestly, I feel like he supports me the same just because he's pretty incredible. I'm really lucky in that regard. He went to school. He has his bachelor's in uh, psychology. So he kind of has his foot in the door in kind of knowing what to, how to kind of analyze situations. So I would say for me, I'm lucky because he's the exact same. He knows when to flex, when to let me express what I need to. And it is frustrating because he's grieving right alongside me. So there are times where, you know, he needs to have his moment to grieve and that's where I get the cue where I need to kind of be there for him. So it's kind of a give and take. But I'm really, really lucky in that regard to have a husband that understands the value of you know, expressing your emotions and not being afraid to cry and just being there for for me and letting me be there for him. Oh, that's really nice. You are lucky, actually. <laughs> yeah, I really am. Do you have any words of wisdom or a little advice for any moms out there who are going through the same thing? Something that we like to say on our channel is to brave the waves together. And the biggest portion of that is braving the waves because grief just comes in waves. You're gonna have highs and lows and you're gonna never really know when that wave is going to come and hit you. It could be a small wave, it could be a large wave, and pretty much the thing is, is to embrace that wave rather than disregarding it, pushing it off, and choosing not to address it because that wave will just continue to keep coming and it'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger until it overtakes you. So to me, the best thing is, is to just embrace whatever emotion you're having and accept it and welcome it. Reach out to those who are around you, your support circle, and just ex express to them what you're feeling and just get through that wave with your support circle and then you can go to the next one. And just make sure that during the down times of those waves, you're taking care of yourself and loving yourself and knowing that what you're feeling is valid and normal. Well, thank you so much, Amy, for letting me interview you today. It was a good opportunity to sit down and talk to you on a topic that means so much to you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I just always enjoy open conversations like this, and I feel like the more we talk about it, the less stigma there is around it. And I just think that's beneficial for everyone going through this and for those who want to support people going through this. I totally agree. You have a good night. Thank you. You too. You too. Bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to follow me on social media, my links are down below. And I'll see you guys later in a new vlog. Bye, guys.